In today's video, I'm going to attempt to draw an isometric room illustration. When an artist wants to draw in a three-dimensional space, typically we use perspective techniques to achieve the desired effect. But there's another neat method out there called isometric drawing that I've always wanted to try out. An isometric drawing is a 3D drawing in which two points are defined on a vertical axis, commonly at a 30 degree angle. In an isometric drawing, there's no foreshortening, no vanishing points, none of the typical complexity that comes from drawing a perspective. It's a very common drawing technique in disciplines like architecture, interior design, engineering, and editorial illustration. Interestingly enough, many cartoonists and illustrators have taken to experimenting with isometric drawing to create unique little micro-environments, like rooms, shops, buildings, and more. Although it's a technique that's designed to be best used for very precise and clear works, there's a lot of fun and experimentation to be had with it. Since I'm not very good with perspective in the first place, and being entirely new to isometric drawing, my first step was to go on Clip Studio Paint's vast asset library to see if there were any free assets out there to help me out. Sure enough, there was a fantastic tutorial by CSP user Steel2 that came with some pre-made guides that could be installed in Clip Studio Paint absolutely free. Thanks to Steel2 for creating this great guide and assets. I've linked them in the description below for any of my fellow Clip Studio Paint users. The download contained two assets. The first one is a pre-drawn 30 degree isometric grid that you can import onto a layer in Clip Studio Paint to use as a guide for your designs. This would be perfect for freehanding a design as it just helps you make sure you stick to the correct angles as you draw freehand. The second asset is the one that I wound up using, which is a pre-designed guide system for a 30 degree isometric space. The cool thing about this is when I import it into a layer in my file, I can adjust it a little to my preferences and once it's set up, I can draw on a new layer above it and all of my lines will stay straight, following the three angles that are outlined by the guides, the vertical and the two 30 degree angles. So to start the sketch, I'm going to use the asset guides to create the room space and then I'm going to turn off the guides once I start sketching in the smaller room details. For this illustration, I decided that I wanted to design a room that encompasses all of my current hobbies, which as I'm sure you know is no small task. I listed them all out in a document and I realized it's a really tall order to fit them all into one space. So the first thing I did was create a few quick thumbnail sketches on some sticky notes. Once I had one that I was happy with, I started sketching in Clip Studio Paint. I started out by mapping the basic room layout, which includes a nice big window, and I also started putting in the basic building blocks for all the different types of furniture in the room. I'm going to fill these in more clearly later on, but for now the blocky furniture really helps me visualize placement of everything in the room. Trying to fit all my hobbies in here means that there has to kind of be an excessive amount of furniture to fit it all, and I didn't want the room to come off as cluttered. Once the furniture was all blocked in, I began working on adding all the small details, and there's a lot of them. I wanted this room to look lived in and used, but also tidy and pleasant to look at. This step was ridiculously fun. I took a lot of time doodling these details in. 
and many of the items in this piece are based on real items that I own or that I've made. A little fun fact, because I had a friend ask me this when I showed them the sketch. The little thing the yarn is coming from is called a yarn bowl, which sits on a side table and holds your ball of yarn while you knit or crochet. That way, you can pull the yarn towards you without the yarn ball falling on the ground. If any of my subscribers out there happen to knit or crochet, I highly recommend picking one of those up. It's been a life changer for me. Once the sketch was finally done, I started the inking step. This step took a really, really long time. I was being a bit of a perfectionist about it. I realized pretty quickly that as soon as you deviate from those straight line type of shapes, drawing an isometric space is pretty difficult if you're not used to it. Even at the end of the piece, the couch and the lounge chair specifically turned out a little weird, but I was still pretty happy with them for my first try. This is definitely a method I wanna practice more of.
When the inks were finally done, I pulled in a color palette that I had decided on earlier and got to work filling in some color flats. I figured that trying to color this in a more realistic way might make the piece look really busy and complex and that a unified palette would help simplify the overall look of the piece. Once the flat color was laid down, I moved on to shading and highlighting. At this point, I had been working on this piece for a pretty long time, so for the shading and highlighting, I kept it really simple, just some simple soft shadows and highlights to bring a little more depth to the piece.
Near the end of the piece, I added a golden overlay just to pull it all together a little more, and I'm really pleased with the final result. I wish I had a room like this in my house, a place that I could disappear for a while and just relieve my stress by creating things and taking part in my hobbies. How many different hobbies can you spot in this illustration? I purposely tried to keep a lot of them vague because I'd love for you to make your guesses in the comments. Take a guess below with your list of hobbies in this room. I hope you enjoyed this kind of relaxing isometric hobby room illustration video. I have more videos on the way, so please like this video and subscribe to my channel if you like this content and would like to see more. I welcome suggestions for future videos. And if you like them, I welcome you to support my work on Patreon as well. Your support helps me be able to focus more on video and content production, as well as other really cool projects that I'm working on. Patrons get access to exclusive business chat, behind the scenes peeks, first picks on some post and topic polls, podcasts by yours truly, digital freebies, and much more. Check it out in my channel header or in the description below. Thanks so much for joining me today, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!